So serves the ball closer to the left side. Ricardo Brown, Tau gets it over to the inside to Norman Black. Oh, Tommy Minotov predicted it so accurately. This guy is going to kill himself tonight for his club. That's right. He's been killing himself for the last few games. He was even the top scorer last time with 46 points, 13 rebounds, and 4 assists. Well, I tell you what, if he used to give 100% to each game, now he's going to give 110%, and that was Ato Iko banging it in from the corner. He has three points in the ball game right now. Great taste trying to run a fast game there, clearing the uh, shot immediately. 13-11 is the count. Uh, still a very tight ball game here. Two-point lead for Great Taste. They're looking for a more comfortable four-point lead. Yes. And Joel Banal bit of them by a uh, brilliant drive down the middle of the glass. Yes, a sneaking drive there by uh, Joel Banal. Outside shot by Billy Ray Bates. Three-point shot, actually. Three-four. He hit it from exactly the same spot where he humiliated Norman Block earlier. 15-14 is the count, just a one-point lead for Great Taste. 627 left in the first period. Here is Norman Black at the right side of the court. Yes, Billy and Norman are taking each other on both ends of the court. Brown goes up against the double team, and the ball falls into the hands of Ateco. Recovered by Ricardo, and here is Joel Banal. He's going to take advantage of this pick set up by Dole Scott, but he blew it. Black for the rescue. Well, Norman jumping a little bit more than Billy Ray Bates there. Comes down with the offensive rebound. The issue two points, a three-point lead for Great Taste. 17-14. Three team fouls for great taste, only two so far for the Redmanizers. And Billy, just to prove us that he has a wide repertoire of shots, took it exactly from the opposite end of the court. That's right, although it was just a two-point shot from about 21 feet. Still a one-point lead for great taste. So far, they've been controlling the uh, tempo here in the uh, first quarter, not really electing to run, trying to set up their place, trying to take advantage of Norman against Joyo Bilami. Atoiko picked up Ricardo Brown. Norman Black momentarily yes, left open. You don't leave him a breach like that. Eight points now for Norman Black top scorer for either squad in this ball game so far. 19-16 is the count. A three-point lead here for the Great Taste Coffee men. It's do or die tonight for them. Stemic. It's going to be a foul downstairs called against the one Scott, which will nullify that shot. Second personal foul now on the one Scott. Uh, Alalor, I'm sorry. So the first personal foul on Alalor. We've got a timeout. We'll be right back. Now available from the paper. Michael Bosch just in time to see that miss by Yoyo Villamin. And here is Larry Demick sinking it and growing a foul to boot from the one Scott. Oh, That's right. God. That's the second personal foul of Scott. You know, Larry Demick is really a power forward in the States. And he really has the uh, power to come up with those offensive rebounds. He knows how to position himself and really wait for the ball to drop to him. And there he faked off before going for the shot. He has four points right now going for a three-point play. Well, if Crispa should snare the title tonight, then this would be our last coverage, and we'd like to take this occasion to thank some of our fine sponsors, including the Kalyan Restaurant, both at Makati and Ermita, where you can get the finest native specialties. Kamayan, by the way, is open for Christmas parties and reunions. Look up their numbers at the phone book. That's right. There's going to be an a foul there against uh, Alalor, an offensive foul wow. called against Alalor, using his left hand to ward of Billy Ray Bates, who was going for the ball. So we've got a turnover here for the Redmanizers. Billaway Bates gives it to Ato Iko. They have been the backcourt partners for Crispa right from the start of the game. Billaway Bates raising uh, his fourth finger to signal the play, and Black is not going to leave him. Yes, and no, uh, Billy has to take it from the outside. There's going to be a loose ball foul there on Billyamin. Scott is down on the floor. The oh, third team foul on Crispa. Great taste playing tougher defense already has six team fouls. You know, quite miraculously, it looks like the one Scott's knee is really improving as he continues to batter it with these strenuous games. Uh, normally, he could not get up uh, on his own steam when he falls to the floor like that. That's right. That's very true. He seems to be all right tonight. There's going to be a shot there short by Norman. Unproductive thrust there by the coffee makers. The score run change. It's still a deadlock at 19 all. Atoiko trying to break the deadlock in vain, and the ball falls into the one's hands. And we've got Brown running a fast break along with Black. Brown escapes Billy, but not Demick. There's going to be another loose ball foul. Let's see who it's on. It's wow. going to be against Alolor for pushing off against Villamin there. Third personal on Alejo oh. Alolor. And the 17th foul for Great Days with a good 4 minutes and 11 seconds left in the first quarter. There's going to be a substitution for Crispa. Ateco is being replaced by Bernard Fabio. And five seconds on the first quarter. Here's Bernie Fabiosa, who came out during that last timeout. A couple of substitutions also. Adornado came in for Alalor, while Philip Cesar came in for Billamin. Oh, There's going to be a foul called on Banal, penalty. and since they are in penalty situation, it will mean two free throws for Abed Gidabin. Well, the Crispa Red Banizers are just the kind of team that can really exploit that kind of an advantage, and there's still four minutes left in the first quarter. Here is Abed Gidabin. Definitely, they're a team that can really, a lot of players that can play one-on-one, -on -one, and given the opportunities, they'll try to fish the fouls from you. 
without them give, getting a good break on the first free throw there. The beautiful trophy that went to him earlier tonight, by the way, was crafted by Angel Zamora and Sons, makers of quality one-of-a-kind awards. Angel Zamora and Sons, located at 1213 Laguna Street, Santa Cruz, Manila. It's a two-point lead for Crispa, 21 to 19, the biggest taste of the lead, because their first taste of the lead was one and nothing until Great Taste came up with a big margin there. Norman Black on a good follow-up shot of the miss by Banal. And the Redmanizers are now enjoying a two-point lead as we move to the last three and a half minutes of the first quarter. No, it's a second deadlock actually in our hands. 21 all. Bernie Fabiosa misses a 20-footer. And here's Norman Black. Picked up by Billy Ray Bates and Abid Gidavin. Here's Adornado with his familiar fake. Oh, he blew himself open. But he missed the shot. And Scott coming up with a good offensive rebound and the follow-in. Scott seems to be all right today, although he's not as mobile as he was during the eliminations, but he seems to be able to be to control himself, no? And we're seeing some lateral movements on his part tonight for a change. Here's Billy Ray Bates driving inside heavy traffic. The baseman oh, takes the shot himself. That's a difficult shot. He didn't go back door and he went straight and threw it over the outstretched arms of Scott and another defender. Nine points now for Billy Ray Bates. And this is the third deadlock in our hands. 23 all. The one Scott gets it right back to Joel Banal. He aims from 18. Put too much muscle behind the shot. And Demick welcomes the ball with open hands. Philip Cesar, leaving a Donato behind, picked up by Joel Banal. He threw up a prayer, the rebound to the one, Scott. That's right. He did not have enough wrist action. Billy Ray Bates coming up with a good steal there. And he gives it to Philip Cesar for the easy lay-in. Philip Cesar redeeming himself from that earlier blooper. And now the Crispa Redmanizers are once again ahead by a basket. 25-23, 2 25 left first quarter. Crispa has held its faults down to only three so far. Scott, Scott trying to elude Demick. Yes, sir. Six foot nine, the one Scott getting four points in the ball game right now. Well, he's not only valuable in defense, he's also coming up with some scoring suck of his own. Eh? That's right. 25 all. This is the fourth deadlock of what promises to be a game down the wire, a photo finish, hanging right. there, and we've got an offensive foul called on Larry Demick. Scott really <laughs> denied him the baseline, foul. established Demick. position, and Demick just tried to power his way in, called for an offensive foul. He's first. Demick. Exactly two minutes in the first quarter. 25 all. Crispa has four fouls. Bosa Donato has it in the left side. A lot of banging inside that paint with Bernie Fabiosa hitting the deck. That's going to be an offensive foul oh, called on Ricardo Bound using his shoulders, and that's the reason why Fabiosa is on the deck. <laughs> right. That's foul number two on Ricky Brown. And Padin Israel, the defensive jewel of Tommy Monotok, who has also shown some scoring prowess of his own in the last two games, has shown up for Abid Gidabin. That's right. Padim Israel is a very consistent player. He has been a very consistent player the last two games because he has scored a couple of points, given off a lot of assists to his teammates, and certainly played good defense either against Brown or Adornado. Bates hitting it from the outside via a screen given by one of his teammates. Uh, the guy is living up to his promise. He's Superman. He's Superman. He's Superman. Huh? Good 27, 25. Joel Banal inside heavy traffic. Finally breaking loose, cutting loose, and the ball mercifully trickled in. That's right. 27 all, a minute and 22 seconds left. You can see the time there on, your right, on the right side of your screen. Well, that's an innovation that we will continue to pursue in the coming years. Philip says are cutting inside and getting the foul from Joel Banal, his third personal. Joel foul. acknowledges the foul, but he himself is in foul trouble. Three fouls here in the first quarter. And so once again, we have a penalty situation with Philip Cesar occupying the limelight. Uh, a one-time MVP awardee himself, uh, a member of the Mythical Five this year. He's been a perennial member of that Mythical Five. <laughs> Substitution. Yeah, that's right. Jimmy Manasala coming in for Joel Banal. Three fouls on Banal and Joy Harpio Hurt could really tell against great taste because Joy is still icing his foot there on the uh, bench, no? <laughs> that's right. Well... He might be in the freezer for quite a bit of time, and we're not only talking literally this, uh, figuratively this time, but also literally if they should lose this match. It's going to be a blocking foul there called against uh, Padim Israel for foul holding against three. Norman Black in that play. First foul on Padim, five team fouls now on Crispa. The Redmanizers hanging on to a two-point lead and looking for a clean sweep of this best of five series for the 1983 PBA Plum. And Brown, uh, he continues to go to town with those long toms, six points now. And that's the sixth deadlock of the game with 49 seconds left in the first quarter. Bernie Fabiosa. Oh, that was a good pick set up for him there. He misses, however, at point blank range. And Dewan Scott once again holds down the rebound. That's his sixth rebound of the game, five and one. Jimmy Mananzala. Oh, very long in that shot. 